All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live uh, every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and then it is available for you to watch anytime at your convenience. Uh, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. Um, so please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archives. Uh, for those of you not possibly not from Nebraska, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. So we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, um, museums, archives, uh, corrections, historical societies. Really, our only criteria is it something to do with libraries. Um, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do session presentations for us on um, top topics of, of things that we're doing here at the Commission. <laughs> um, but we also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have with us this morning. Um, today with us is Rochelle Reeves. Good morning, Rochelle. Good morning. And she is from uh, University of Nebraska at Kearney. Um, and she is going to talk to us about um, e-documents in the classroom, GovDocs. Um, some people it's their favorite topic, some people it's it's painful <laughs> to deal with them, but um, that's why we have people like Rochelle who can help us navigate all of this. Um, so I'll just hand it over to you to um, tell us, um, you know, introduce yourself a little more and tell us all about how we can access these resources. Great, well, um... I first did this presentation uh, at the Nebraska uh, Library Conference, the Library Association Conference yes, yes. Um, last month. And one of the things that, um, as I was looking for a topic, what can I present on? Um, well, I'm the curriculum librarian, I'm the OER librarian, and I'm the government documents librarian. And <laughs> honestly, e-documents, really uh, in the classroom really encompasses all of my job areas. And so, um, you know, looking at particularly at K-12, these are all free, uh, freely accessible, and um, they're from the government. So that just kind of took um, all of my, um, knowledge i don't know if i want to say expertise mm -hmm. yeah so it combines yeah. it all yeah mm -hmm. so that's where this came from um so i guess i'll get started here um where do all of these documents come from well they come from the government and um this is just a neat little chart that I found in the US government manual, one of the, the many little treasures that, that we have access to. So of course there's the three branches and then there's departments underneath those branches. And then there's all kinds of independent agencies, establishments, corporations, and they all um, come out with documents every month every month there's new stuff and so that's where this comes from and um, the university of nebraska Kearney library is a uh, federal depository library we're a part of that program um, we are a selective library where unl is the regional library uh, so we can select those few things that we want uh, to have in our collection uh, but really, with the advent of the internet and things being put online, it's just opened it up. Um, we represent the third congressional district. And uh, so that's a lot of space, you know, basically between us and, and uh, Colorado, Wyoming. And so um, 
for people to have had to come here to get this information was um, much more difficult. Mm -hmm. So now these are available online. Awesome. And I'll mention here before we go off this slide, because this is oh, a lot sure. on one slide and you possibly can't read it very well. That's okay. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone will have access to the slides afterwards with the um, with a recording. Yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, Rochelle's going to send me her um, slide deck here and so you'll be able to read this a little um, easier on your own computer, possibly. Um, and also she has a link there where she got this from, too, so you'll be able to find it. This is true. Yes, it is um, one of those free resources. So yes, you will be able to see this a little better. But I think um, even without being able to read it, just kind of illustrates um, the hierarchy of where these come from. And so what are they? Well, it depends on um, which branch you are looking at. The executive branch has their list. The legislative branch has theirs, hearings, reports. Um, all the bills and laws, and the judicial branch, of course, um, opinions, journals, um, transcripts. And why use them? Well, Mr. Franklin here <laughs> tells me that they are primary documents and they're open access. So um, particularly for schools uh, who have limited resources, um, homeschool, uh, homeschoolers definitely can take advantage of this and um, they're with an internet connection they're they're freely accessible where do I find them when do I use them how where are they um, that's a, a question that I get quite often and there are so many places that you can go and they are fun um, Obviously, I've I've uh, grabbed on to Benjamin Franklin here. Um, Ben's Guide to the U.S. Government is huge, and what I like about it is they have um, the different ages broken down, and depending on what you click on, um, if you're talking about um, Native Americans, just say what is offered for ages four through eight is going to be different than what's offered for ages 14 and up. So it, it scaffolds um, all kinds of games and different adventures that you can go on just to try to make learning fun. And I've got the link here that um, you'll be able to go to. There are so many sites out there. Um, and just because you're working with youth doesn't mean that they're not going to um, be able to utilize those adult sites as well. So I do have um, a LibGuide that I've created that's um, for all the documents, but there's also a youth section. And so when I click on that and, okay, can you see that? Okay. Um, so we have it broken down by all of the different um, areas here, um, but then there is a special one for youth. And um, broken down, I, I'm, I'd be scrolling for a while here. So um, know that you will be able to scroll um, to, your, to your heart's content. There are so many here. Um, some of them are appropriate for all ages. Um, some are just for uh, teachers and educators, middle schoolers, but generally speaking, they are broken down um, by category and then um, offer uh, something, something to you, something different uh, to break up maybe what you're already doing in class. So um, I've received questions. Um, can I link to this? Absolutely. Absolutely, you can link to it. We would love that if if um, you have a page that um, people would go to and, and would find this helpful. Um, absolutely. Um, that would be well, great. Well, it's good that you mentioned that because that was one of the questions someone wanted to know is like, so this is something that's um, on the UNK website at the university. 
but it's publicly available. There's no special, it's not like it's something just for the students there or some special place you have to log into. It's just. Correct. Yeah. And and that's the, that's the neat thing about documents, the gov government documents is um, we do need to make them freely available. And so how do we, how do we do that without some kind of a, a login? Um, well, we just make sure that that's separate from from where we have uh, maybe the databases, for instance. So yes, I'm I'm more than happy to to have you link to this. Um, oftentimes, you know, we're thinking of just history or or government. Uh, topics but um they're stem resources so nasa oh i could spend so much time uh, on the nasa <laughs> site it is so cool um but they have nasa space place and um, stem engagement with games videos crafts climate um click on one I have a poor connection today for some reason. So there's stuff here that that oh, they can is. click on. It is so much fun. And if you go here to educators, it's um it, it's kind of not updated as far as maybe the graphics go, but um it's really fun. Um and one of the things that um I thought was timely um yes a pumpkin oh for car oh for carving pumpkins yes yeah and they suggest i mean for safety here all they're doing is using a magic marker huh. so if you want to just do it that way it shows you how to do that or then you could take a little chisel and you yeah. know do that too but um there's just all kinds of things that you can do um with your students or have them, you know, say, we've got some extra time, go here. And, and that can be just a part of your uh, core extension. Um, I know uh, coming up in the next couple of years, and this may be a something that will give some people some bad, bad um, memories, but uh, a couple of uh, solar eclipses are coming up in 2023 and 2024. Uh, and I know a lot of schools and libraries will. Now, none of them are going through here in Nebraska, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view <laughs> this time. But, you know, who do you want to teach about it? Um, they do, Would NASA have things like that or? Absolutely. Just regular NASA.gov. Um has uh you know i'm i was focused more on the 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 lower end but like i mentioned before all those other sites are are available as well so there's uh generally speaking there's the um adult uh version and um sure. and the kids version and then i had had a question once before about is is are any of these sites available in spanish oh, yeah. so I believe that says maybe view, view or see in Spanish. Um, but when I did a search just on, you know, what what government sites are available in Spanish, I came up pretty empty. Um, hmm. You know, things like child welfare services, they have some some resources that are available in Spanish. But no, I'm for kids. Um, there, I, I, I couldn't find a lot that were advertised that way. So, you know, NASA does have just on their own um, a little spot here that you can click on. You just switch it over to Spanish. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know we do have a lot of um, people speaking other languages here in Nebraska. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and um, it's um, sure, you know, we've, we've, they're they're going to be learning um, in English as well, but oh, can make it a lot easier if if they have some some options. 
it helps them learn. Yeah, they can see what they know and then switch, switch it over to the English and say, ah, that's what that word is now. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's what I did when I was taking German class. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you want to um, be able to know if you're on the right track. So let's see. Oops. Okay. Well, I guess that's. I lost my presentation. <laughs> uh, you see down at the bottom there. there. Yeah, there's your power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, all kinds of things to do with climate, um, energy, science fair experiments. I mean, how many times do kids say, well, what should I do? Or, or you know, they're asking their, their teachers. What are what are my options? And um, this is, my, is a great place to go to to find to find those um, classroom and project ideas. And the U.S. Geological Survey has lesson plans, activities, videos. So lots of great things. I I, I can just keep yeah, clicking on things. Yeah, if you can, since this is a big topic, um, the mm -hmm. NASA, so so each of these here in the slides, these are links to each of those specific pages, correct? Yes. So when you have the slides, okay. Can we see the NASA STEM one? Um, that's mm -hmm. one of, you know, it's a big, lots of libraries are working on that. Um, so here we can um, browse for students or for educators. Uh, see, that's the part, yeah. Yeah, and it shows, you know, what do, what do I want? Well. Or, or what topic am I looking at? So, and then for students, oops, there we go. Looks like it's it's the same for both. So, but um, yeah, making preschool fun. And so you can go here. Um, STEM on the station. Mm -hmm. Nice. So okay. yeah, um, and you can have a weekly STEM connection, so you can sign up for weekly STEM updates. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Give you ideas, because it's always hard to come up with new ideas. I know. <laughs> it is, and um, you know who isn't interested in space, right? So this is just for um, grades nine through twelve, and different challenges, different things for, for them to do. Hmm. So I think this would be a great place to go to um, for those different projects. The Artemis mission, yeah. And so um, the geological survey. Has um, educational resources not as it's not as fun to find <laughs> I can't remember where I found it but there there it truly the stuff is there so <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so yeah each one of these is a different link um, to get you different places and find more materials um, labor statistics so maybe you're interested in um, talking about careers and kids want to know, well, what would I, what kind of education would I need to have to be um, this particular um, laborer? And mm -hmm. the Occupational Outlook Handbook is one place to go. Um, usually more for the upper grades because it's more detailed, um, but there's also um, this career exploration just for grades uh, K through 12. Yeah, I remember using the occupational handbook, yeah, when I was older, like you're about to graduate or you're in college and trying to figure out what to do with your life. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or or using, you know, helping people use that, but this is nice that they have something for the younger ages, yeah. It is. And, you know, the nice thing about um, these products 
um, is it can, it, they can help fulfill dreams. Um, I had a student that came in, now she was a freshman in college, but you know, not far off of this, right? Um, and she was supposed to find information for a speech that she was going to have to give. And it was about what she wanted to end up being, what she wanted to end up doing. Mm -hmm. And um, what she wanted to be was something with the Yankees, the New York Yankees. She was really into baseball and she just wanted some kind of a job that, you know, made decent money that, that she could be um, with her team. So we had to find, also had to find an actual job um, um, notice. So is there a job out there that has your, um, your information? And so we looked through and we found a job out there in some newspaper that was perfect for her. She was able to find that then in the Occupational Outlook Handbook, find out more information, what kind of um, classes they want you to take, what kind of degree, how much money you'd make. And she left the library beaming because <laughs> she found out that there was a job out there exactly like what she wanted. And she found out what she would need to do to get there. So that was really one of the highlights of my, probably my only occupational outlook handbook highlight, <laughs> but it stands out in my mind. That's awesome. Yeah. And who knows how many people have done that on their own that just didn't, you know, mm -hmm. didn't work with you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. History and government. We got to include that, right? There are all of the core documents and um, kids in the house. It's from the clerk of the house. Hmm. So contains information. So how a bill becomes a law, not the one I remember, but. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah, the schoolhouse rock one. Yes, that's one. yes. In my so, head. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. So, um, but uh, Cheryl Johnson's the clerk of the U.S. House of Representatives, and she has this broken down here for young learners all the way up to high schoolers. And then um, here's a teacher's section as well for other resources and activities. This one is one of my favorites. I mean, you know, books, hello. Um, but this is from the US Senate. And so if you are looking for a place that has um, specific books about specific parts of the government, um, you can click on that and that will talk about the different books that are out there on that topic. So you don't have to go out and reinvent the wheel. Oops, nice. there we go. So um, again, each one of these different cl clickable links. I see that one about the our documents in the upper right. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, talked about national. Where is it? History Day. Okay. I know I've seen, heard of a lot of librarians helping, having kids come in and just like, you know, mob them with, okay, I've got to do a thing for National History Day, help. <laughs> yeah, because they're, they're not necessarily doing that for a class. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's on their own. So, um, yeah, there's um, information here. And, you know, it may or may not fit the actual topic because each mm -hmm. each year of history day has a specific um a theme, uh, area, theme yeah yeah so it may or may not fit but there's a lot here and this these so these the documents are actually scanned in too for mm -hmm. seeing the actual the originals 
Uh, there we go. Yeah. So yeah, it's got nice. here, but then also you can see the old timey version, mm -hmm. the kind that maybe they can't read with the handwriting. <laughs> But yeah, so there's a lot of stuff here um, for so many different sources, so many different reasons. Um, one of my favorites is Constitution Day. Um, that's my birthday. <laughs> Not back then, but <laughs> much later. Um, so the U.S. Department of Ed, National Endowment for the Humanities, Library of Congress, American Memory. Um, some of those same documents. And then um, statistics in schools. Hmm. You can get that emailed to you as well. And just for the various holidays or special days, they put out a um, an email and you can read that and go to more information. So when you get the email, uh, this is what it ends up going to. Um, Here's the statistics in schools. Um, so it talks a little bit about it and then um, has these fun facts. So you can um, download the teaching guide and um, also the, the poster. Um, and then that's something that you could have on a bulletin board um, or you could just use that in class, but specific to that day. So it's kind of fun to mix things up. And if you have special days that are coming up, you can do something um, specific for that or do crafts with that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different fun things that a person can do. They would have things for other holidays or other specific dates as well. Oh, yeah. Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah. So there's even some more obscure ones. I mean, I suppose Constitution Day might be one of those that, you know, a lot of people don't think about. And because um, we, we don't get it off, you know, we have to work that day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, they, um, it, it would just be, um, I think, a, a fun um, thing to add to your curriculum. And so here's uh, their teacher's guide and then guiding questions. So, um, as we all know, when we ask anyone if they have any questions, um, particularly in, in maybe the K-12 or even college age group, um, you just hear crickets. And so um, there's some different ways that um, uh, maybe we can um, get that conversation going. And this would be another great one for History Day as well. Um, here's the K-12 lesson plans, and then also recommended websites. So a lot of information, um, not just on this page, but to take to other pages. And here's um, a little bigger version there um, of the Constitution Day. So it gives it gives uh, uh, information about um, the presidents and taxes, and quartering, and then broken down by elementary, middle school, and high school level. I really enjoy. The most important things for to start teaching the kids. Yeah, our kids. Yeah, our kids. absolutely. You know, an apportionment. I, I my my son was just talking about apportionment and and how um, he's he's learning about that in school. So it was you know there's some things that that we can even as parents um, point them to or or um, maybe brush up on our government a little bit. 
Okay. We've kind of talked about this one. <laughs> this is uh, not necessarily <laughs> a government thing, but um, mm -hmm. I have found uh, some of the Schoolhouse Rocks um, available on YouTube. And um, you can go to congress.gov um, for that information process of how um, laws are made. Um, I was trying to tell my son, he's 13 and he's just a 13 year old boy. Um, he was um, telling me about how they have to learn the preamble to the constitution uh, for school. <laughs> And so I said, oh my gosh. And I started singing it. Yes. And, I And he just <laughs> looked at you like you were crazy. Yes, we had yeah. to learn that in school too. And I, and the way I wrote it down on my test was singing and you could hear all the other kids doing the little hum. Yeah. That is exactly what I told him. <laughs> it's ingrained into our brains. Yeah, Saturday morning cartoon time. <laughs> And, but it and yeah. it worked, yeah. And so I told him, I said, oh, you know, I can help you with this. And yeah, he thought I was lame, but it's true. These things are out there and they are fun and they're helpful. Music is a great way to learn. So I endorse Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> um, so what are what are the limitations of using um, e-documents um, in the classroom or at home. Um, I actually didn't think of this. Um, my son was the one that that thought of um, limitations um, because he was asking me about the presentation um, last month and he said, well, what are your limitations? And I said, I don't know. And he said, well, why, why shouldn't people use the documents? And I said, I can't think of any reason. He goes, you have to. We learn about this in school. If you don't come up with limitations, that's propaganda. Oh. And I, Listen to the children, yes. Okay, and they shall lead the way. <laughs> and so um, um, he really hates this part. That's him. <laughs> and that's him now. But um, I have to give him credit because um, I did come up with a couple. Um, you have to have that solid internet connection, which, you know, right. mine is a little spotty today. Um, it's a perfect example, yeah, in, in practice, it doesn't always, yeah, yeah, it isn't always available. It's not always available. And, and during government shutdowns, a lot, of, um, a lot of the pages, they don't just not get updated but they completely go away. Mm -hmm. um, I've never really understood that, but I'm sure there's some political reason for that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing though, during the pandemic, um, we really learned that not everyone has a device. Yes, the device itself, and, yes, somebody to use it mm -hmm. on, yeah. And the libraries were shut down. The schools were shut down. So, they didn't if they needed a device and they needed that solid internet connection where would they go you know you can take your device even if you have one down to the public library and you can get that internet connection you can go to a coffee shop well these were all shut down right. so there are limitations even to these free resources and some people um, their device is um if, if at the minimum is their telephone, which mm -hmm. is great for some things, but for looking on the screen at a don't no at a government document, that would probably be painful. <laughs> that would be really painful. Yeah, yeah. it's um, so definitely. They can um, find the links to things if they have that, but then what? Yeah, exactly. So um, those were those were definitely solid limitations. Well, it's a good thing now that you know some of the libraries now, many libraries now, well, schools have the one to one sometimes of giving mm -hmm. devices out if they can. Um, but I know um, many more libraries now, um, and it was happening before um, the pandemic started as well, um, doing the loaning of either devices 
tablets mm -hmm. or hotspots to get them the internet too um, at, at their um, homes or wherever they are. So uh, hopefully, you know, that's, we're helping out. <laughs> With yes, we're trying, trying. And, and we're learning. We're learning yeah. what we need to do. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, yeah, questions. Does anybody have any questions for Rochelle? Um, anything you want to ask, type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, anything you want to know about any of the government documents that are out there? Uh, anything you want her to share or show that um, we haven't seen yet? Um, Go ahead and type in. I'll grab your questions. Um, I did have one question that came in. You had mentioned at the very beginning about um, UNL is a regional library and UNK is a select selective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what's the difference between? Absolutely. So um, a selective library um, such as UNK, um, we select the items that we want to to have um, available. So each, only the government could come up with this system. <laughs> um, there are different item numbers that go with different uh, committees and, and so you might have manuals or handbooks or just other informational stuff. Those all have different item numbers. And so we select those ones that we think are best for this area for our students. The mm -hmm. regional, however, uh, we answer to the regional. Um, every selective answers to a regional. Um, ours is Lincoln and they have everything. So they don't get to select everything. Uh, so like a produce. full depository. Of, mm -hmm. like, so every government document they would, everything that's put out they would have. Yes. So theoretically, physically, not like not electronically. Yes, those that are physical, I believe they have the physical. Um, there are some committees that aren't doing physical anymore, which you know saves a certain amount of money, saves right. some paper, um, yeah. and so those would be available electronically. So there, I mean, that's good and bad, right? And the access is there, um, but what if the access isn't there? What mm. happens to that information? What happens to those documents? Mm. Yeah, I do know a lot of gov do government documents, so state government documents that we collect here at the Library Commission too, that we get copies of are um, scanned and available online, a lot of them. But yeah, like you said, those limitations, you have to keep those in mind, even though you know, this whole presentation is about how so much great stuff is out there online, but there's gonna be times when you can't use it and that's okay. You know. Plan accordingly. There are the paper versions of them somewhere. Um, yeah, we hope. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I some of them I don't know. I don't know if there's any paper out there. Um, like you said, of this because that was something. Yeah, a question came in about like you know you're talking about all these things are online now. How long has the government been doing this kind of scanning of online? What's the history of it? I mean, oh goodness, um, quite a while. Um, maybe a good 10 to 12 years at least. Okay. Um, they've and been- Are they doing historical scanning or historical putting things up? Some of them? They yeah. are, yeah, yeah they, have been, they have been going backwards. I think we're back to maybe 1990 mm -hmm. online. So yeah. um, we're getting there. Yeah, <laughs> not bad, not bad, yeah. Um, and it takes time. I know we do that here. And if anyone's ever done, I know many libraries have done a digitization project. It can it takes a long. It can take some. It takes time to go all the way back, depending on how far you're going to be uh, trying oh. to do. Yeah. And think of that that first page that had all of the committees and and agencies. Oh, yes. That's probably not all of them, but that's that's what was listed in the in the government manual. Every one of those has thousands and thousands of documents that need updated or put mm -hmm. online so it's and how many pages are coming out new new pages coming out every day yeah yes <laughs> um, another question we have um so it's curious about government documents for agriculture mm -hmm. 
I think yeah. you had to give let me go back. Yeah. Um, oh, it was on the um, this one. The lip guide, and then go right. to youth. At your page, yeah. Um, there were more, um, and for some reason, um, they they took down some of the the best ones, um, but. Mm -hmm. This is for all age groups. Nice. Okay. And National so, library. library. And uh, I went to my, you can tell I went to my American <laughs> farm games. I wanted to see mm -hmm. what that was. Um, youth and agriculture, some coloring stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Farmer's market. Market, oh. So yeah, that's kind of um, sometimes thinking outside of the box. So if we um, are looking at agriculture, um, we can also maybe do something with finance, you know, that farmer's market, uh, careers, we could do some career exploration, uh, communities, maybe, uh, might be stuff, environment, so um, oh, yeah, even it though under a lot of other topics, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even though um, we're not necessarily um, placing it under agriculture, um, I think there's a lot of different um, topics that you can put together to um, really make a, a robust lesson. Mm hmm Hmm. All right, thank you. Yes, they, they, they said thank you very much. That's good info and good tips. Absolutely. Yeah. As I say, you're in Nebraska, agriculture obviously is going to be a big topic for many of the, of the kids. Um, um, oh, oh, okay. Someone, you, you went to some of the pages. Someone wants to know if you can do um show a little bit of that that first the one the ben franklin website that cute one do it show a demo oh, or one. yeah, yeah. That ben's guide yeah i want to see what that one looks like someone wants to say can you go you know, for the kids mm -hmm. show a little bit about how that one works i like different age but split just splitting up there of everything that's I do too. And you can, um, there's learning and adventures and games, and you can just um, also go to the apprentice level and look at the branches of government, how laws are made, symbols, songs, structures, mm -hmm. those historical documents. Language and documents, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Lots of places that you can access those documents. And then, you know, learning about the tribes. Um, let's see, there's games. So yeah, testing knowledge, you can uh, do different games, uh, geography, crosswords, word searches. Those are, um, we print those off sometimes when we have the pause mm -hmm. groups or summer fun club groups come in um, for different, uh, things for them to do. We just try to have a lot of different options. Nice. And then test your knowledge with branchomania. So interactive. Yeah. Online interactive game, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good too that they do have, because we're talking about the limitations and the internet connection. If you have the internet connection, good, you can do these, or you've got those things you can print out and just hand them, uh, here, do this crossword puzzle or. Always yes. have a backup because you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I'm sure we will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. All right. Did that, did that. All right. That's all the questions that had come in so far. Uh, does anybody have any other questions you want to watch, uh, you want to ask, or anything else you want to see? Any particular section of um, 
government documents or the government that you're interested in seeing that um, we haven't looked closer at today, uh, go ahead and type into your question section. I'm gonna say this is great information. I'm, I'm so glad there's so much more of this because government documents has always been daunting, I think. Mm -hmm. It's such a huge, well, I know from working at it previously at a university library it was also a selective one. It's still huge. There's just so much to keep track of and it's just- it There's was, a lot. Yeah. Um, that having these places have kind of narrowed it down to, you know, someone else doing this work and narrowing it down to these age groups and everything and having it available for us is really helpful. Mm -hmm. And hopefully more of our schools and libraries, public libraries will be able to use this for some new programs or. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, sometimes the, the hardest part is identifying those uh, resources. Mm -hmm. And so if they're identified, it, it certainly makes it um, a, a less daunting process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that lib guide you have out there is great. Yeah, I've I've looked at that and it's got everything, kind of like a one-stop shopping of whatever is out there that you can possibly use. <laughs> well, we try. <laughs> oh yes, no pressure. <laughs> well, I don't see any other uh, desperate questions coming in right now. We're almost to the end of our hour, so that's. Um, Good, we just started a little late, but that's that's okay. Not too late, I don't think. Um, all right, yeah, well, um, I think we'll wrap up for today then if nobody has any questions. Um, any, like I said, the slides will be available, which will have a link to Rochelle's LibGuide. So then if you do have other questions, it's got your contact info on there as well, correct? So people can yes. reach out to you from there, the email or anything on that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, any last words for today before I? Uh... Ah, well, thank you um, for inviting me to speak. And um, we are not just here for um, the faculty and staff here on the UNK campus. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also a public library, so uh, please reach out. Um, I. I uh, serve the third congressional district or the, the depository does. So mm -hmm. um, I'm here for a large chunk of people and not just for, for those specific ones, but for everybody. So the UNK library is open for if people wanted to, anyone was happy in the area. <laughs> yes, course. yes, Incarnate. absolutely. Incarnate. You can you can certainly drop in. Nice. That's good to know because not some some university libraries are, are not that, are not mm -hmm. open. Yep, you need an ID or something to get into. So yeah, nope, we are we are completely open. Nice. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Rochelle. I'm so glad you were able to do this. Also, it was yes, short notice to um, getting you on the show, but we got it done, and I'm glad people were here and got some questions answered. Um, we'll get the recording up for this, um, and so more people will be able to see. Um, as I said, this was a session that was done at our state conference, Nebraska Library mm -hmm. Association conference, uh, last month. Um, so I always like to bring some of those sessions on Tech Compass Live to um, get, give more people a chance to hear um, some of these great presentations that were uh, this year um, only done in person. All right, I am going to pull presenter control back to my screen now so I can do my little wrap up here. There it is. So here is the um, today's uh, session. Um, if I go back to my Encompass Life page here, we've got our upcoming shows listed, but here is the link to our archives. Um, right underneath all the upcoming shows, the most recent ones at the top of the page. So today's show will be up there, should be up by the end of the day tomorrow. Everyone who attended and um, registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's available. I'll have a link to the recording on our YouTube channel and a link to the slides. Um, Rochelle, you need, make sure you send me those slides when you get a chance. <laughs> I will do that right away. Yeah, and um, that will be up in, on here for you um, to watch. 
while I'm here, I'll show you this is, um, there's a search feature for our show archive. So if you want to look for a particular topic, see if we've done something, you can do that. Uh, we You can limit it to just the most recent 12 months, most recent year if you want. If you want something just very current, um, and that is because this is our full show archives. I am not going to scroll all the way down because this is huge. Um, we're going all the way back to January 2009, which is when Encompass Live first premiered. So do be aware when you are watching any recordings of the show. Um, many of them will stand the test of the time, test of time, and still be good, valid info. But some things will become old, outdated. Services and resources may have changed drastically or may no longer exist. Um, a staff may be at different libraries now, but just pay attention. They all have an original broadcast date that you can check and so you'll know when that particular show actually happened and take that into consideration when you are watching any of our recordings. We do also have a Facebook page. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there <laughs> and you'll get notifications of when our um, sessions are happening, little intros to our um, Meet the Presenters. And I do post on here um, when the recordings are available as well. Um, you can also follow, follow our hashtag and Cup Live also on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, so um, uh, give us a like over there if you um, want to follow what we're doing there. Um, so that'll wrap it up for today's show. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Rochelle, for joining me this morning. Um, I hope you join us. Here's our upcoming shows, and we've already started scheduling things into 2023. Okay. <laughs> um, but things are, are getting um, put on the calendar, so you'll see some more of these dates will get filled in. Um, uh, next week, our topic will be um, reaching your military affiliate, affiliated patrons with the Libraries and Veterans Toolkit. Um, so this is a great guide online, again, um, that can help you with that from the um, Libraries and Veterans National Forum. So um, please do sign up for that if you're interested or any of our other upcoming shows. And keep an eye out for, I'm um, going to be filling in some of these November and December dates with topics as well. Well, thank you everybody for being here and hopefully we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.